average day in New York City in 1989. Nine rapes, five murders, 255 robberies, and 194 aggravated assaults would be reported. Fear was rational and simply a part of everyday life. Uh, it was a period of very high crime in New York. It was a period, particularly as a woman, where you felt very insecure being in New York. Trisha Miley, who was 28 at the time, was jogging on her usual nighttime path in Central Park, was raped, severely beaten, and left unconscious. It's very scary, um, and it makes you question your safety just in general when you're um, out. Um... Raymond Santana, Kevin Richardson, Antron McRae, Corey Wise, and Yusuf Salam were in Central Park the night of the crime and later became prime suspects. They became known as the Central Park Five. I remember hearing about it in the news, and you know, there was a lot of publicity around it, of course. A terror spree through Central Park. She was attacked, raped, left for dead. A case that ripped this city apart. As the Central Park jogger case. And an attack on a woman in New York City Central Park. The rape of the jogger. The rape of a jogger in New York Central Park. Brutal attack in Central Park. Skull fractures, a significant loss of blood, and advanced hypothermia. The following morning, the lives of that jogger some of the boys in the park, and many other New Yorkers would never be the same. I think, unfortunately, the part that got warped was around um, just generally who rapists are, and that at the time, people thought that um, the people who had been arrested looked like what, you know, justified what many people think rapists look like, which is just not the reality, so. Because of the media, the New York Police Department was under the gun to solve the case as quickly as possible, and the five men were easy to convict as they fit the public stereotype of rapists. It sounds terrible. I think for a lot of people it just made it more believable, because it just fit everybody's prejudices of this is what happens, this is what crime looks like. So, I mean, the public opinion is already against you, and then they say, well, we're going to judge you by a jury of your peers. You know, until you become aware that the jury of your peers are the people in the neighborhoods and the communities that you come from, you really don't understand. You know, you think that these people are supposed to be fair, but their, their um, fairness is skewed and it's based off of everything that their family is saying, everything that their friends are saying, everything that they're reading in the newspapers, everything that they're seeing on TV. And unfortunately for us, within the first uh, few weeks this case happened, there were over already 400 articles written about it. You know, these articles weren't articles painting a nice picture. ABC News reported, quote, Some of the young men who have been arrested in connection to the attack, so young as to be called children, really, told police that they were just out wilding. Sort of a, a group of young kids, you know, kind of running through a subway or Central Park and just harassing people, going up to them, you know, getting in their face, threatening them. The term wilding usually referred to young minorities. It dehumanized them in a way that is eerily similar to a pack of wild animals and had racist undertones. This reflected the racial tensions of the era. The fact that the Central Park Five were marked as wilders greatly influenced the jurors' decision. When we stepped out of our door, we knew that the atmosphere was going to be one of hatred. We knew that the atmosphere was going to be um, very difficult. We basically were thrown out with the trash and we were told to survive. There is anger over this incident that seems to have only grown in the days since the assault occurred. This city has uh, two ways of dealing with crime victims. One when you're white, one when you're not. New York's now the capital of racial violence. The five said that although they were with a group of teenagers that had committed some other assaults, the rape was not one of them. 
After 24 hours of interrogation without the presence of a lawyer, they confessed. The police coerced the five into confessing, saying that their confession would only benefit them. Although the confessions did not align with the facts of the crime, and there is no concrete evidence linking them to the crime, the NYPD decided to prosecute the five. We charged her, and like, we got her on the ground. Everybody started hitting her and stuff. And she was on the ground. Everybody stomping and everything. Thirteen years later, a serial killer named Matthias Reyes came forward and confessed to the rape and attack of the Central Park jogger. This one's found to be true through DNA tests. The motions are granted as to all of the convictions. Did you attack the Central Park jogger? Yeah, I did. Did you do it alone? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Did you rape her? Yes. Did you beat her? Mm-hmm. Did you leave her for dead? I thought I left her dead for dead. Before Matthias Reyes confessed, the Central Park Five had already served between six and eleven and a half years as innocent men. They had been wrongly convicted and the nation was in shock thirteen years later. They have this method, right? They, they say that we will give you a speedy trial and they will convict you in a speedy manner. So when they find out that you were innocent, there's no speedy way to compensate you. There's never a way that we can fully be compensated for what happened. Never. Even though there's, there's talks of uh, de Blasio settling this case, there's no, there's no amount of money that can erase the, 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 the indelible scars that happen. There's no amount of money that can erase the thinking that I have. Raymond Santana, Corey Wise, Antron McRae, Kevin Richardson, and Yusef Salam perfectly filled the racial stereotype of people who would go wilding in the public eye. This prejudice heavily relied on race. During the late 1980s, many people thought that they had left discrimination and racism behind them in the civil rights era. This case created awareness that this was not true. After the five were coerced into giving false confessions, the case had already broken national headlines. The media frenzied over the case. Rape cases are reported daily, however this one particularly garnered a lot of attention. The brutality and the element of interracial gang rape attracted shock and anger throughout the nation. The country mourned for Trisha Miley, the victim, and called for great punishment for the culprits. The NYPD searched frantically for somewhere to put the blame and found the Central Park Five. Mob mentality spread like wildfire through the United States. And even before the court cases began, it seemed as if the country had already condemned the young men. This combination of prejudice and racism in the United States with frantic mob mentality to find a culprit resulted in the wrongful convictions of innocent people. The media coined phrases such as wildings, and many reporters exaggerated the case as journalism concentrated more on popularity than fact. Thirteen years after the court case, when it became known that Matthias Reyes was the true rapist, the world was shocked. The case once again died the headlines. The country remembered how they had persecuted the five men with such blind determinedness, and many felt guilty. Although during the era of the Central Park Jogger case, the suppression of minorities was increased, the case ultimately acted as a catalyst for awareness of racial discrimination in the media and mob mentality in the U.S. When you look at the law, the law says that you're innocent until you're proven guilty. We were being looked at as being guilty and we had to prove ourselves innocent. 